I will now speak to you about uh, the legal analysis of AI and robotics, and then Conrad Shimasko from the Helsinki Foundation of Human Rights will present the re results of the legal analysis work in human enhancement. And finally, Santa Slokenberger of Uppsala University will present the legal analysis of human genomics. We will have some time for questions at the end of the presentations. The main goal of the legal research uh, of AI and robotics was to identify, discuss, look at legal developments and legal issues and human rights, uh, along with the gaps and challenges related to these, uh, to these areas at the international, regional EU and the national level. So we looked at 12 countries in the EU and outside the EU. The 12 countries were Sweden, Netherlands, UK, Germany, France, Greece, Spain, Poland, United States, Brazil, China and South Africa. There were five key steps in our legal analysis approach. The first was to identify the legal issues and challenges related to AI and robotics. So we carried out a literature review of AI and robotics documents looking at the legal aspects, articles in academia, in legal practitioner journals, books, commentaries or policy studies from the last five to 10 years to determine what are the legal issues that are being discussed and debated and need to be further explored in Siena and particularly in our country studies. Then we looked at the relevant international and regional EU laws and human rights standards using desktop research. So we looked at what are the key organizations in the area, explore the scope of their mandates, what work they are doing. Uh, we mapped the international sources of hard and soft law and looked at the application in terms of AI and robotics and determined the gaps. Then we used a mix of some criteria to determine which specific issues we should look at at the country level. And these criteria included the prominence in legal and policy discussions at the international, regional or national level, the prevalence of such issues in the discussions, their potential to impact ethical values and human rights, and the novelty and need for further research in the areas. And using these criteria, criteria we shortlisted two specific topics of study, each to each for AI and robotics, and I will outline which a little later in the presentation. Then we also carried out a national comparative analysis. So using the country reports that we prepared, we kind of did a horizontal comparison that looked at the, that looked at the, um, what, what were the research results? What are the common themes and what, 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 is, the, what is coming out from these countries? Uh, the purpose of our horizontal comparison was to kind of look, help broaden our sight, uh, widen our horizon and see things in perspective in relation to the research on AI and robotics in the legal field. And then we identified the gaps and challenges uh, and these were connected to either sufficiency of policy and the laws and their application and or interpretation. So what are the legal issues and human rights challenges of AI? As we can see, there are many of these. So for example, lack of transparency, unfairness, bias and discrimination, very well talked about. Lack of contestability, there are IP issues, legal personal issues, cybersecurity issues, issues related to impacts on workplace, privacy, data protection, issues related to liability and accountability for harms. And some of these issues relate to the design and nature of AI itself. Others are connected to its implementation and use. These issues could be cross domain, could manifest in more than one sector or field, or they could be common to all technologies, for example, privacy. Many of these are interrelated at times, transparency, fairness, and don't operate in silos. And some of these are novel, for example, legal personhood for AI systems and robots. Uh, from these uh, wide variety of issues, we then selected two specific issues for study at the national level. So these were algorithmic bias and discrimination and intellectual property issues related to works created by AI. With regard to robotics, we looked at the legal issues and human rights challenges as well. And these included deception by robots, legal personhood, use of autonomous weapons to kill harm or make threats of harm, safety and control issues, liability issues for malicious and non-malicious use, replacement of human workers, job losses, privacy invasions, consumer protection issues, intellectual property issues. And from this variety of issues, we then selected two specific ones for study at the national level. These two were creation of a specific legal status for robots, i.e. has the law created or does the law recognize a specific legal status for robots? Are there new 
boom, are the movements in this direction at the national level? And the second issue was safety and liab civil liability issues. Who is liable for damage caused by robots? So here are some key findings that uh, that we uh, that the report presents, and I've just presented a few here because there's uh, there's very limited time to take you through these. Uh, at the international level, so we see that issues are covered in a general sense by international law provisions with a few natural exceptions, either because they are regulated at the regional or the national level. At the EU level, what we see is data protection law might provide a good basis to deal with many of the issues, but effectiveness of data protection law depends upon its use. There is also what we see a discrepancy in the approaches and recommendations of the various inst EU institutions, for example, at the parliament level, at the commission level. And yet what we see overall is a general proactiveness in terms of, uh, in terms of policy and legislative developments. At the national level, what we see is that legal discourses are more established in some countries than others. Um, at the time of uh, writing of the report, there were no significant or major amendments in legislation on constitutional or human rights with particular reference to developments in AI and robotics. In most cases, what we see advocates is a cautious response to the regulation of AI and robotics. And at the time of the research, again, no new regulatory bodies had been created to specifically regulate AI or robotics, though several calls and proposals have been made. And it is worthwhile to look at the to look at the legal analysis report and the country reports for further details on these findings. So what are the gaps and challenges? Our research shows that there are very, there are few AI and robotic specific regulations, except in limited cases, for example, autonomous vehicles and drones. This is both an advantage and a challenge as existing laws and regulations which address such issues directly or indirectly may often fail to take into account what are the creative uses and impacts of AI on individuals and society. Secondly, we have uh, what was highlighted was the lack of regulatory bodies. And this is especially relevant because strong calls have been made for such bodies where existing regulators fail to cover the remit of, um, of new impacts and effects of AI, for example. Then there is uh, the issue of sufficiency and adequacy of existing national laws. This has been questioned. For example, the Swedish national report points out that, yes, of course, existing law could accommodate issues of discrimination. Whether it is suitable means to tackle the issue is a whole other matter. And similar in our cases of other country reports, this has also been highlighted. Um, also, for example, the German report points out that existing regulations are not adequate in, in the sense that perhaps uh, it is too soon to tell whether the new data protection regulation would be sufficient to protect privacy in this context. There are also differences in the nature and sophistication of the legal academic debates in some countries on AI and robotics. In some cases like Poland, these have been found to be clearly lacking. Uh, for example, the China report also highlights the need to continue to strengthen frontier research and discussion on legal issues related to AI and robotics and the need to kind of provide resources for future legislation and judicial trials that pertain to AI and robotics. Another highlighted challenge was the lack of judicial knowledge about how AI and robots work and the need for proper training. And this came out in the context of the Spanish country report. Uh, there is also the issue of grayness regarding the liability of robots and automated systems. This is a particular challenge and it also boils down to the conflicting views that exist on legal status and many of these questions remain unanswered. There are wide ranging societal and human rights implications of AI and robotics. As we see, they will affect a spectrum of human rights, data protection, equality, human dignity, human safety, privacy, justice. And what we see is the, these technologies have the potential because they work closely together and with vast amounts of data, they will have crossover and multiplicative effects that which then exacerbate legal and human rights issues. And uh, if the AI and robotics industry continues to develop applications and systems without paying attention early on in the design process to the impacts of such technologies, then we have a problem at hand. Uh, so there is a definite need to set clear ground rules on what AI and robotics applications are not permitted. We need a drawing of red lines where required. 
Uh, we also need to determine how to address the negative impacts caused by the import and export of such technologies. And in particular, we need to pay attention on the global impacts of AI and robotics, particularly in relation to vulnerable international communities that need protection. And finally, just to share, our pro uh, we are happy to say that our work is feeding into other related projects like the Sherpa project that is looking at AI and big data from the ethics, human rights and security perspective. And also we hope to continue the work that we have done in Siena in the context of other new technologies. And we've also shared this at the European Commission level. And we hope this research will be useful in your work as well. Thank you.